ladies and gentlemen, we will start the uh, press conference today. Um, please switch off your handphone before we start. And uh, I, I just have a short introduction of uh, today. The guest of today's is uh, um, the professor, Mr. Ha uh, Hayano, and uh, he is someone that do the research of the Fukushima uh, food um, regarding the food food safety conference. So then he want to give a report on that uh, by then. And uh, there's a cooperate uh, high school student here, Onotera. Uh, he's, uh, she's uh, actually um, have to carry the radiation uh, um, checkle all time during Fukushima. And they would like to talk about what's actually happened in Fukushima right now. Yes, go ahead. OK, so thank you very much for a kind introduction. So my name is uh, Ryu Hayano, a professor of physics at, at Tokyo University. And this is Ms. Uh, Haruka Ono there. So today we are here to explain about this paper that I understand you all have. Okay? And the title of this paper is Measurement and Comparison of Individual External Doses of High School Students Living in Japan, France, Poland, and Belarus. It's called the D Shuttle Project. And you may, wonder, you, you may be wondering what D Shuttle is, and this is it. This is, a, this is called the D shuttle. This is a personal dosimeter. Okay. And uh, if you uh, look at the first two pages of this paper, you find that there are 220, uh, 233 names. Uh, all, and most of them are high school students from uh, many countries, Japan, uh, France, Poland, and Belarus. So, uh, and I am one of the co-authors of this paper, and uh, Onodera is uh, also, you, you can find her name on, on, probably on, yeah, on the second page, third line and second page. Okay, she is one of the authors. So I give now the floor to Ms. Onodera, Onodera, who is going to tell you about the uh, content of this paper. So, go ahead. Hello everyone, my name is Haruka Onodera. Um, so today I would like to explain our study, D Shuttle Project. First, uh, I will talk about what pushed us to do this project, then how we investigated uh, results and discussion, and lastly, conclusion. So let's begin with the reason why we started this project. A Fukushima, uh, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident began out in March uh, 2011. Uh, five years uh, have passed since the accident, but it has been a great concern. So in order to understand the current situation of, of Fukushima and properly evaluate the risk of radiation, we measure and compare the individual doses inside and outside of Fukushima prefecture. In six schools inside the Fukushima prefecture, six schools in the other prefectures in Japan, and 12 overseas areas, 216 people participated in our study in total. These are the maps indicating uh, the location of uh, participating, uh, participating high school uh, in Fukushima prefecture uh, and in Japan. And the, 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 this map shows the situation of contamination of radiation. Uh, and this uh, white line indicates the boundary of uh, evacuation zone as of 2014. And this map shows how high the natural radiation is at the location. Uh, by the way, the color scales are different between two maps. These are the maps indicating the location of participating uh, uh, examined overseas areas. 40 people in France, 12 people in Belarus, and 28 people in Poland participated in our study. We use personal dosimeter D shuttle, and it can measure gamma ray, uh, and including both of natural radiation and man-made radiation. And it records a dose every one hour. We asked participants to carry the D shuttle for two weeks 
they hang it from their neck during the day and they put it bedside while they're sleeping. Um, and at the same time, they recorded their location, where and when they were in the activity journal. Based on the journal, we classified and analyzed the data. This is the raw data of the shuttle. We read date, time, and dose rate by using a special equipment, and we wrote location uh, based on the journal. And then we classified and analyzed the data. And this is a uh, figure uh, indicating the distribution of dose rates, the dose measured every one hour uh, for 12 Japanese schools and five European areas in the form of box and whisker plot. The vertical axis indicates a dose rate in a logarithmic scale. The unit is micro seabed per hour. The red bar in the box shows the median uh, and the whisker is 1.5 times as long as the box is and the values higher than it were indicated as outliers uh, with cross marks. The outliers were almost 1.5% of the entire samples. As you can see, the distribution of those rate uh, and outliers were almost equal in all areas. Uh, from, these above, uh, from these results, uh, paying attention to median, the distribution of median is almost equivalent inside and outside of Fukushima prefectures and in overseas areas, as you can see. Uh, and outliers were similarly detected in all areas, but electromagnetic waves or noises can have influence on them, so we need to figure out the cause uh, particularly. Thus far, I explained the distribution of those rates but when we discuss the risk of radiation to the human body, the annual individual dose is more useful. So <clears throat> uh, for each participant, we integrated the, the hourly dose over the two-week measurement period and converted it to a yearly value. This figure shows the distribution of estimated annual individual doses in the form of a box and whisker plot. The vertical axis indicates the annual uh, personal dose, and the unit is millisievert per year. Though a scatter occurred among the schools and the areas, um, uh, the distribution of individual doses are, are almost uh, equal inside and outside of Fukushima Prefecture and European areas. <coughs> I put them together in this graph. Uh, there is a difference in the range of the in distribution of individual doses, um, but the, the exposure dose is almost equivalent in five regions. Um, uh, focusing, focusing on the median, the distribution of it is almost equal. And we can say that the dose of Fukushima is almost equal to the natural radiation in other places. So uh, we discussed the reason why personal doses in Fukushima are not much different uh, from other places, despite the soil contamination. Um, so these uh, verbs the, indicate estimated natural background from thorium, uranium, and potassium-40 uh, concentration in soil samples. And uh, these boxes indicate the personal dose distribution, including both of natural radiation and radiation from radio cesium. According to this graph, uh, it is considered that actually there is a, a, a there is an influence of radio cesium, but because of the lower natural background in Fukushima, the total dose uh, are not much different from other parts of Japan. And lastly, uh, we attempted to analyze the main cause of external exposure as a future work. By making use of the digital feature that it can measure the dose every one hour, we checked the data against the journal and analyzed the main cause of external exposure, um, where we are exposed to radiation the most. Uh, we are going to make use of this feature to do risk management at places where people need to deal with radiation exposure. These are the examples. <clears throat> um, we focused on the dose at school and at home 
where students stay the longest um, and made histograms. These are the histograms uh, show, showing the distribution of those rate uh, and um, the, the these three graphs are uh, these three um, the, these graphs are uh, the histograms of three schools of whose distribution of those rates were uh, characteristic. <coughs> the horizontal axis indicates uh, those rates, and the vertical axis indicates the number of the samples. The color green shows the distribution of school dose, and yellow does home dose. At school 12, which is our school, uh, home dose is higher than school dose. Uh, this is because school building is made of reinforced concrete and its shielding effect is very high, while wooden houses are easily influenced by outdoor radiation. In contrast, uh, at school 5, which is in Gifu Prefecture, um, school dose is higher than home dose. This is because, um, because of the radioactive, radioactive substances in the school building materials. And at school three, uh, which is in Nara Prefecture, uh, the distribution of home dose and the school dose is almost equal, and the entire dose is low. And thus, uh, by checking the data against the journal, uh, we can analyze uh, where we are exposed much. So um, it is considered that uh, the measurement of individu individual doses with the use of activity journal can be a powerful tool for risk communication for people living in contaminated areas. So this is our conclusion. We conducted an investigation to measure and compare the individual doses inside and outside of Fukushima Prefecture. And we got to know, at the moment, high school students in Fukushima do not suffer from significantly higher levels of radiation. Um, so that's the conclusion, and uh, let me uh, give you uh, some background information. So uh, we started to do this project in the summer of 2014. So we distributed the D shuttle, this, first to a Japanese high schools, the 12 high schools that, we see, that you already saw on the map. And in the summer of 2014, the students, the co-authors, came to Fukushima and had a workshop try, trying to analyze and understand the situation. And this is uh, Haruka working hard analyzing the data. And on the last day, we had our, a meeting uh, reviewing the result. And this was the summer of 2014. And later on, we sent these uh, dosimeters to Europe, to France and Poland and to, uh, to Belarus. And in December 2014, they came back. They came back to Fukushima High School. And when we opened the box, and then uh, the, this, uh, this is when we, were, we started to examine the D shuttle. In the summer of 2015, last summer, French co authors, the French high school students, came to Fukushima, like this one. Okay. When they came, uh, already they were, while they were in France, they put on this D shuttle and then came to, uh, to Fukushima. So we so this shows a graph of the personal dose per hour. This is 0.2 microsievert per hour, okay? And this is while they were in Paris. This is the overlay of the graph of eight students, eight French students, and four teachers and experts. So you see the first peak here, that's the, this peak. This is when they had to uh, undo this D shuttle and put on the tray for safety inspection at the Shardogo Airport. So this was x-rayed. And then our, this huge peak here is what, during their flight. Okay, then they came to, uh, to Tokyo. On the second day in Tokyo, 
we all got invited to the French Embassy for our reception. And again, we had to undo, and then uh, ha this had to go through the security gate. And that's uh, this peak. On the third day, we all got on the bus and drove uh, on the coastline uh, on route, route 6 to, uh, to Iwaki and to Fukushima. And then uh, we went to Tomioka Station. How many of you know t where Tomioka is? That's 10 kilometers south of Fukushima Daiichi, and it is within the restricted zone. And this, we went there because French students wanted to see the effect of tsunami, not the radiation, but the effect of tsunami. And this, is, um, this was picture was taken by me uh, on that day at, in front of the Tomioka Station. So that's this peak, okay, so it is higher. And after that, we went to, uh, to Miyakoji. How, how many of you know where Miyakoji is? Raise your hand. Okay, fine. So Miyakoji is a town, the district, district within the 20 kilometer zone. And the government lifted the, uh, the evacuation order in Mar in April 2014, and people returned and started to live there, uh, and we visited the, visited the farmers in Minak Miyakoji, and this picture was taken on that day, okay? So the farmers sitting here, okay, entertained us with the, the, the beautiful tomatoes and cucumbers and, uh, and uh, uh, watermelon and so on, okay? And as you can see, the radiation level isn't high in, in, within the 20 kilometer zone, in Miyakoji, at least. And on the last day, we went to, uh, to Kunimi, which is famous for peaches. So we went there and talked to the farmers. And then on the way back, we picked the peaches and went, went back to Fukushima High School and measured the peaches, of course, together. So as you can see, not much difference. We carried the same dosimeter from Paris to Tokyo and uh, various parts of Fukushima. And uh, as you can see, the, do the external dose, are not much personal dose, are not much different uh, between Paris, Tokyo, and Fukushima, at, at least in the region where people live, where the high school students live. So that's the conclusion. So thank you very much. Thank you both. Uh, so we will go to the Q&A. Um, when you raise your hands, please uh, name, uh, give your name and your belong, the, um, your name and your media. Thank you. Oh, by the way, um, the, uh, the, this brochure contains most of the, the slides that Haruka showed with the, the transcript. And uh, this was prepared after when we, we went to, to Milan, the, the food ex expo, and we attended this uh, food safety conference and she gave a presentation, essentially the same presentation as you've just heard. So this contains the information and also my presentation uh, in, in Milan, it's also included in this brochure. Right, uh, do we have any questions? Uh, thank you very much for the uh, very interesting report. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I'm freelancer uh, of the Foreign Press, uh, Hiro Sasso. I would just like to ask both of you about the comment on the uh, Professor Tsuda's paper, uh, because this uh, Professor Tsuda made a presentation here uh, a month or, month or two months ago, and uh, I gave some impact to the, but that, the, it's, it is, uh, I think, uh, quite, a con quite a controversial paper. Mm. So I'd like to ask your comments on that. Well, um, she doesn't take this question. You understand, right? So maybe it's better that I, I try to answer this question. I'm not an expert on this subject. But uh, you may uh, be aware that on this journal, where uh, Tsuda's group uh, published this uh, somewhat controversial paper, there appeared seven letters online, this one, uh, this one, and uh, these ones, 
Uh, you can you can you can go go to this site and uh, have a look, and all these letters from uh, from ward uh, experts, uh, who uh, these each one is about 400 words, so that's uh, not not a very long uh, uh, letter, but uh, each one uh, point out that there are flaws in Tsuda's argument and so on, and you can read read and judge yourself. Any other questions? Uh, two very brief questions. First of all, I'm James Cole from the University of Tsukuba, and I am a particle physicist, by oh. the way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing I would like to ask about the, the radiation monitoring. I understand that these badges mainly measure cesium. Is that true? No. No. All right. Uh, this contains, um, well, please... Uh, Allow me to be, a, to, be, to be a bit technical. So this is a, an electronic dosimeter which contains, uh, which uses uh, silicon. Oh. So silicon is, uh, is in your camera, okay? The digital camera, okay, right. So it is sensitive to gamma rays within the range of uh, some 50 kilo electron volt up to about uh, one, one MeV. So this picks up the gamma rays uh, from uh, natural sources like, like um, the, gam the uh, uh, potassium 40, which emits a gamma ray at 1.4 MeV, and the thorium and the uranium that's the, uh, the long-living isotopes which alpha decay and then subsequently emit gamma rays. Uh, these are the sources of natural background that every one of you receive. Uh, plus, of course, the cesium ga gamma ray which is at the 0.6 MeV. So this measures everything. All these uh, gamma ray sources natural plus man-made, as uh, Onodera just explained to you. One thing that I do wonder about in some of these uh, measurements, though, that um, the uh, beta particles from cesium decay do have a range of about one meter or so. And so if you're standing above one meter, then, then you're not going to see a lot of that. So if you're a, a, a baby crawling on the soil, mm -hmm. you, would, you would get one measurement, whereas if you're an adult and the badge is up here, you would, you would get another measurement. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I, I also wonder, I, I uh, uh, don't doubt that the data of this study is, has been properly taken, uh, but uh, one thing I, I wonder now that, uh, uh, well, three... One question at a time, okay? All right, yes. All right. So uh, yes. Uh, could you... Would you answer this better right question? Okay. Uh, so uh, we we measured the exposure dose of high school students in this investigation. So um, um, I so I I hope uh, we will um, send these dose uh, to uh, s s smaller uh, kids and uh, measure the dose and uh, co compare. Uh, the individual dose. Well, uh, uh, the, in, in the, the, the beta rate, uh, you, you, as you are a particle physicist, you know very well that the beta rate range is very short so that it doesn't affect, uh, that it doesn't contribute to the effective dose at all. It only... Uh, Except for babies on the ground. <laughs> uh, but but uh, that's also the, uh, the skin irradiation and it doesn't contribute to the effective dose much. So, um, uh, when you live in Fukushima, uh, but, but, and, and also uh, remember that uh, potassium-40 also emits beta rays, and uh, uh, the decay products, the uranium, thorium, also decay, uh, emit beta rays, and they are all natural sources which exist on, on uh, everywhere in the world. 
All right, so one final uh, quick question then. Um, since this uh, uh, survey was done several years after the event, I should say, uh, well, now it's 2016, but uh, nearly four years after the event, yes, yeah. five years, now it's five years, 2011 to 2016, nearly five years. So this years was after. done in 2014. 2000, so three yeah, years, three years after yes. the event, yeah. three years after the event. So the, the um, uh, iodine has been missed. And so we, we do hear reports, I know that you can't go back in time and measure that, but we, we do hear reports about uh, 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 children with abnormal number of cysts on their thyroid glands. And I wonder uh, how this would uh, have any correlation. I, I guess this sort of radiation that you are measuring would, would not have any effect on this, but I'm just wondering if you could comment on, on, on this. You? Well, um, this, uh, the correlation between the deposition of cesium on the ground, which you see here, and the possible um, intake of uh, iodine-131 in early phase, that's the, I, I remember the iodine-131 has a half-life of only eight days. Yes, it decayed okay. pretty quickly. Yeah, yes. right. Uh, whether the iodine distribution is the same as what you see on this map, it is not clear and probably maybe slightly different because what you see here is the, uh, is the effect of the uh, distribution, dispersion of cesium plus the effect of rain, mm -hmm. which uh, so the rain uh, 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 rainfall uh, brought down the se radioactive cesium from floating in the air together with other particles. All the way particles. to Tokyo, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, deposited the cesium on the ground. So um, our study essentially has no, if no correlation with the, and does not contribute to, the un to understanding the early our possible exposure of iodine to, uh, to uh, people living in, in Fukushima. All right, thank you very much. Yes, uh, just, it, are you a working press? A working press. Can I have the working press first? Oh, okay. So. Hi, Eric Slavin with Stars and Stripes. Mm -hmm. Um, do you feel like you've definitively answered a question here regarding the type of radiation you're studying in these areas, um, that it is not, in fact, an issue at these high schools, or do you think that there are other variables that could affect in the future whether or not this does become a problem again in these areas and that more study might be needed in order to, d to determine safety? Would you like to answer? Okay. Um, the, uh, um, I discussed uh, in, in my presentation, which is uh, showing it here, that um, uh, the effect of uh, internal exposures in Fukushima is much, very much less than what we initially feared. And right now, it is almost no problem. <laughs> um, as long as you are eating uh, the food stuff from, uh, from, from, from market. What the fuck? Marketed uh, food stuff. Uh, which, is, uh, not the, which was not the case are at Chernobyl uh, in the case of Chernobyl accident when uh, the report shows that uh, the dose of internal exposure dose increased after five to ten years. It decreased first and then it increased again after five to ten years. So people, one, uh, people were very cautious and we were also very cautious initially uh, so that uh, uh, thinking that uh, uh, we should not let that happen. So, so that the food are under control right now. You know that the rice bags, last year's rice bags, uh, more than 10 million of them were examined and none exceeded 100 becquerel per kilogram limit. 
last year's rice bags, uh, more than 10 million of them were examined and none exceeded 100 becquerel per kilogram limit. That was bullshit. So, um, and uh, so in the future, the, uh, I don't think that in Fukushima, the internal exposure uh, effect will, will go up again uh, like it did in, uh, in the case of Chernobyl accident. The external exposures are rather predictable, right? At uh, decay, and then there is a, the effect of weathering. And of course, our study didn't uh, uh, cover the region where people are not living. I mean, this ex exclusion zone, that's the restricted zone, which is indicated by this white R uh, contour. Uh, it, this, this inside of that white contour is not, not included. But uh, uh, the government will be uh, lifting the evacuation order uh, gradually, and, uh, and the people who start to live in there. So there may be some uh, uh, um, uh, uh, surprises <laughs> where people get exposed to, uh, to um, uh, additional external and uh, some internal exposure unless people are, are cautious about uh, what they eat and so on. <laughs> so as long as you uh, people live in the zone outside, I think uh, the people living in Fukushima understand very well the uh, potential risks or the lack of potential risks for, from food exposure and also uh, the uh, effect of additional external exposure, which is becoming low. Not, of course, there is some effect. But uh, th that effect is, uh, as you have heard uh, Haruka's uh, presentation, is uh, within the range of external exposures in other parts of, J of Japan or elsewhere uh, in the world. So yeah, we have to keep measuring and we have to keep informing people, but I, I, I would be surprised that there would be people ex uh, if exposed to say, uh, 20 millisievert per year of radiation in the future. I don't think that will ha ever happen. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tim Horniak. I'm a freelance journalist here at the FCCJ. Um, very interesting uh, way that you formulated this study by uh, recruiting high school students. Uh, uh, very um, unusual. Uh, how did this come about? Who had the initial idea to uh, include uh, students in this? Or how did you propose to, uh, mm. to do the study if you were the ones who had the idea at first? Uh, what, what inspired you to, um, to get involved and, and to, how did you get this idea to use this de-shuttle personal, personal dosimeter and uh, go to Europe first and then to, um, to back to Fukushima? Could you tell us how that, how that came about, please? Okay. Thank you. You, you, you answer. And so uh, I conducted this investigation as a member of um, a super science club at my high school. So, uh, and <clears throat> I uh, actually, I didn't know about radiation in detail at the time uh, when we measured and compared the dose. So um, I, I was uh, studying about uh, studying the radiation and um, uh, conducting uh, the investigation. And, and so um, I, but, no, no. So as, uh, uh, as a citizen of Fukushima, I want to know um, how high, uh, how high the, my um, the exposure dose is, and I want to compare those uh, with uh, mm. the pe people in living in other places. So, mm. so I, no, no, I participated in uh, this study. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, it was um, the uh, students who triggered this. Of course, we, I provided the, the, the D-shuttle 
and, uh, and advise them that this may be an interesting devi device to use. But uh, the motivation came from the students living in Fukushima. That was, that's definite, and it is also described in the paper. The paper says that it, this, this work study was motivated by the, by the high school students who wanted to understand better the, their current exposure situation. Does that answer your question? Yes, right. Hello, <coughs> my name is Joël Legendre um, from uh, RTL the Radio from France and uh, BFM TV of France. Yeah, it's very peculiar, your experiences. And has it valid been validated by any scientific authority, your report here? Mm -hmm. And uh, have you had some help from your friend of CERN, the national, uh, no, the European uh, Nuclear Research Center? And the uh, last question, uh, if they were really risk, would you tell us that they are really risk for the children? Um. Okay, well, it's... Um I work at CERN. <laughs> um, I am a physicist commuting to Geneva uh, every month, almost. And I have a group at, at CERN in Geneva where I do my own research, which is about antimatter. Um, but I, for, for this particular work, uh, I used my own experience as a, as a physicist and also a, a, a person knowledgeable about radiation measurement, but I didn't get much information from uh, from uh, from CERN. But um, 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 this, um, uh, of course, this paper, the authors include experts from France, uh, uh, like. Um, I, forgot, I keep forgetting the name of this institute. That's, uh, uh, for instance, uh, 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 number 32. That's uh, uh, um, CEPN. Does that mean anything to you? Um, page, page 51. The third page. Third page. Also, Africa. CEPN, that's France, that's the professional, and also uh, there is a contribution from IRSN. Yeah, yeah, so they, they are participated in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, and they, uh, in this study, but they, they are just, just one, of, one, of, one of two of them came. Um, but, um, uh, what was the other the other question? Well, the the no, uh, the this was validated. This because this is the journal of radiological protection. It is this is this is a professional journal. It's published. Published? Yes. Not confirmed. No, yeah, published, but 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 uh, this is a ref lead and referee, uh, referee report came, and what did you do with the referee report? Oh. Sadoku no, uh, yeah. I gave you the referee report and you, re you wrote the reply, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, w there was a communication between us and the referees, and in the end it was uh, uh, pub uh, published. So that is, if somebody wants to, uh, the data is available, and uh, and uh, the, the, this device is also available. So if we if somebody wants to uh, either confirm or discredit our work, you are welcome to do do so and publish your own paper. That's that's also po that's always possible. So this is uh, uh, this is refereed and is published. Anybody else uh, questions? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm an editor of Philosophy Magazine for high school students, and uh, I'd like to ask another uh, some two questions. Uh, I'm amazed to see the word this communication in the in this conclusion last part, and uh, it said that the measurement of individual dots rates together with the use of activity journals is a powerful tool for understanding the cause of external exposure and can be useful and 
uh, clearly understandable tool for risk communication for people living in contaminated areas. Mm. And so I was amazed to see this, the word, to see the word risk communication. So could you give me some concrete example for this word in the ordinal sense? And uh, can I ask you one more question? And uh, how did the result of this study change your life? Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, so first, I, I'll answer your uh, first question. Um, this communication is not the type. The use of this shuttle, how, how, is, how is, is this useful to communicate the, ri the risk to people? And so um, we, we, can, we, can know, uh, we can know where we are exposed uh, much um, by, using, uh, uh, by the using of uh, activi uh, the personal dosimeter and activity journal. And so um, we can tell help people living in contaminated areas um, to uh, you you are exposed uh, some, somewhere uh, or anywhere mm. so uh, the people can uh, take measure uh, against the exposure or uh, the people can um, improve in their living so I think uh, this is um, risk communication Hmm. So yeah, we can we can sh if somebody's dosimeter shows this, and then you find a peak, and then uh, we ask them, we s we ask this person, where were you? And then this person hmm. can understand. Aha, that's when I went that that place and so on, and that will help people to better understand their present situation. That's what she wants to say. Okay, go on. Okay. Go on. So, um, this, um, uh, through this investigation, um, I understood how important it is to, um, to uh, evaluate the risk um, based on the uh, objective or uh, scientific facts. So mm, I, mm, I, I'd like to keep this, no, no, to keep it in mind and mm, to inform people of uh, the importance of um, the ju judge um, basing our, our judgment on objective facts. I wonder if we could just take a quick uh, sidetrack from th this study uh, to your own uh, research uh, at CERN you were talking about. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind just briefly telling no, us okay. uh, your, the focus of your research. Um, uh, I understand uh, antimatter is part of your, 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 your research. Uh, yes. Are you also considering dark matter? Uh, oh. And if so, uh, <laughs> what do you believe dark matter may be um, composed of at this stage? Um. Okay, well, I, I'm interested also in dark matter, but my present research at CERN does not address this question directly. Uh, what we are doing right now is to uh, measure precisely the masses of proton and antiproton, and should there be even a tiniest difference, that would be a Nobel Prize winning result. And so we are, we are trying to measure the precisely the masses of, of, of uh, proton and antiproton. And uh, uh, what we think the, uh, the, the, the uh, what we think about, what I think about the dark matter, I don't know. Um, because, but uh, because I am uh, at CERN, my thinking is, is, uh, is probably, probably uh, slightly biased because people at CERN hope that LHC someday not in the far, far future, can discover a candidate particle for dark matter that is the lightest supersymmetric particle. Whether that happens or not, we don't know yet. But if there is indeed a lightest super, supersymmetric particle within the range of the LHC energy, 
then it should show up within a few days from uh, from from few few years from now. So that's what we are hoping to uh, to discover. I am former Japanese ambassador to Switzerland, Murata. I highly appreciate your precious work because it is necessary to reassure people living in Fukushima. On the other hand, I would like to point out new development. Former Prime Minister Hatoyama, former Prime Minister Khan, both just recently uh, clearly denied that Fukushima is under control. And now there is an important inf international impact. And uh, I would like to refer to your optimism as, as to the future development. Because nothing has been solved in Fukushima. Nobody knows where about, how is the situation about the more than fewer roads underground. And anything could happen. Criticality, uh, hydrogen explosion, uh, or steam explosion. And uh, such circumstances, what is needed is the sense of crisis. Actually, I think what Japan faces the sense is the crisis of Japan as a nation, not the crisis of the management of electric companies. So I would like to ask, as if it is permitted to be optimistic about future development. That's, a, that's not a question, right? That's just it's a comment. comment. Yeah. But can you, can you, he's also asking a question. I, I think that's, a, is it possible, do you see any possibility for Fukushima in the future? Well, it is quite unfortunate that uh, the, that particular nuclear power plant carries the name Fukushima. When you say Fukushima, you meant Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. It doesn't mean Fukushima High School or Fukushima Pre Prefecture or Fukushima City. So uh, use the word carefully when you say Fukushima. Be explicit. Is it Fukushima nuclear power plant, Daiichi nuclear power plant, or Fukushima Prefecture or Fukushima City? Please. Uh, my name is Asby Brown. I'm a volunteer with the uh, Citizens Radiation Monitoring Group, SafeCast. Um, and I've been following Dr. Hayano's work uh, for a long time, and I'm well aware of this project from before. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is, uh, these kind of comparisons are very important uh, for helping people understand what's normal, and our judgment about that needs to be based on these kind of comparisons. One, for Dr. Hayano, do you think it is possible or likely to do a similar study involving internal contamination, comparing people around the world uh, as well? And then for Ms. Uh, Onodera, um, it's very impressive work. Um, I also actually want to apologize for my generation's sake for dumping this problem on your generation. And I've met lots of young people in Fukushima who, like you, are not letting it uh, give them a sense of defeat, but are learning how to measure and learning how to take control. Um, what do you think uh, is the best way to move forward in the future for helping people understand uh, their doses, their risks, and how to live in Fukushima. You personally. Can you go first? Yes. Thank yeah. you. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, uh, th th there is uh, various opinion among uh, us uh, high school students participating in uh, our investigation, but one thing um, we do share is the uh, importance of um, basing our judgment of uh, on object objective facts, as I said um, in former question. So um, uh, I think um, all people can um, take away such um, we adopt such no, 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 and such a way as we adopted in this investigation. Um, everyone can evaluate the uh, risk and uh, and um, take measures properly so um basing uh, so to make a judgment based on a scientific fact is 
the best way of improve the situation, I think. Okay, so back to the first question, a comparison of internal exposures worldwide. That's um, an interesting, but probably a very uh, meaningless question, uh, because uh, we eat radioactivity every day, like potassium-40. Every one of us has about 4,000 becquerels of potassium-40. And also we have uh, carbon-14. And so when we uh, use the, the uh, our uh, whole body counter, which we use to uh, assess the internal exposures of Fukushima people, uh, we, all, we see right now only the peak of potassium-40. Okay. So every one of you is emitting uh, potassium-40 gamma ray, about 200 gamma rays coming out of your body every, every second. So when we do this measurement uh, here, in Tokyo or elsewhere or in Paris or in Moscow, all, you, all we see probably will be just potassium-40 peak. And that is almost constant because uh, uh, the amount of potassium, natural potassium, is controlled. If you eat too much potassium, then we're just, uh, the body doesn't need the excess amount of potassium so that the body will just emit the potassium-40 in the urine. So, um, uh, we don't see, if, uh, even if we were to compare, I don't think we, we learn nothing. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, it is the amount of potassium-40 is proportional to the, to the amount of uh, muscle. So uh, you, you will be just measuring the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the amount of muscle <laughs> Across all, <laughs> across all the all the uh, the populations in 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 other parts of of the world. So uh, I I didn't quite understand why you proposed to do this. Uh, to help people understand what's normal and how that. Compares. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. In that sense, we can, we can we can measure, and then uh, tell tell the people. Oh, okay. We all have possession forty and nothing else. Yeah. We could do this. Yes. <laughs> uh, as you know, during the uh, decommissioning of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, one of the most um, difficult um, tasks will be dealing with a melted down fuel. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that uh, people really know how to uh, handle uh, to a great extent. And various solutions are being proposed. First of all, removing the debris with robots and other things like that. How do you think it's going to go, and what do you think is the best shot of, uh, or the best uh, way to proceed with uh, this very, very difficult task, if you had to speculate? Is this for me or for, uh, for Onodera? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm asking, uh, you're asking this question to a wrong, wrong couple. <laughs> we, are not the, we are not the best. Uh, people to answer your question, but scientists. yeah, well, um, you know this uh, this attempt of um, of muon tomography, okay. So uh, the resolution is not that high yet, and takes a long time, about a month, of exposure, but that's the first hint that gives you the first hint of the whereabout of melted down fuel. Because, um, because other attempts, like sending a robot or, sending the, or inserting the, uh, the fiber camera and so, so, so on, so far, uh, so far have all failed. And the only you know, uh, data that we have, that peop they have, about the whereabouts of, of melted down fuel is from the muon. That's, uh, do you know about this, muon tom tomography? That's quite interesting. If you don't, uh, Google and, uh, and have a look. That's quite interesting. You are, there's this uh, natural, naturally occurring muon, that's the cosmic ray, which penetrates this hand like this. One particle per second or so goes through this. And uh, so they use this to, uh, to make 
are to, to make a picture of the year of Fukushima Daiichi, unit number one, I think, uh, to look inside and uh, whether, whether the fuel, fuel rod is still in the pressure vessel or there isn't. And their answer is, which was published, uh, which was uh, made, made public last year, I think, is that there do doesn't seem to be uh, the fuel rod in the, in the pressure vessel of unit number one. But uh, then what is a difficult question, and peop people don't know, we don't know. Uh, there are 7,000 people working every day at Fukushima Light site, and uh, this is going to be a very long, long work. Act to understand, uh, to first to control the water, <laughs> and then to, to understand what's inside and uh, we don't know. We'll take, take, well, they say they will take, they, they, the project will take 40 years. But uh, how, how long it will actually take, uh, we don't know because we don't know what's inside. And uh, opening and actually taking out the, the, the debris is, is, uh, is very hard. And uh, new developments are necessary and you, New and 40 years, you will be retired, okay? <laughs> I'll be dead. <laughs> so it is when these young, young generations, the young, young people are needed. Not, not, not she, maybe, but uh, the, this generation will be needed to, uh, to, uh, to control and understand what, what actually happened at Fukushima Daiichi. So this is why we have to train it and, and work together with the young generation. You, understand, you agree? I do. Just one follow-up question for uh, Ono Dera-san. Did this inspire you to pursue any career in particular mm. Mm. when you graduate from uh, high school? Good question. Mm. 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 Um, uh, I think uh, I, I want to be a scientist of uh, molecule biology. Molecular so uh, I, I will not relate to radiation at so. all. <laughs> <laughs> Realizing German Press Agency, DPA. Um, one question. Um, the radiation is, is, according to your study, uh, very low. It's uh, almost the same as uh, in, in, in Paris or, or hmm. other parts. Of, um, what's the reason for that? Uh, is that because the decontamination work by the government has been so successful? And would you say it's... It's, it's done now, we don't need to, to continue decontaminating the area, uh, everyone can come back. Do you, would you declare Fukushima now a safe, as a safe pl place to, to live? What's your... You go first. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, actually, we didn't measure the dose of people living in the contaminated area in this investigation, so... You mean a restricted area? Uh, yeah. Oh. Mm. Uh, and mm, so, so mm, I, mm, we can't say the whole Fukushima is safe, um, but um, we, uh, I hope uh, we will send the shuttles to a uh, contaminated area and uh, help to do risk management for people living there in the future. Well, th this gives you an answer, part of the answer to your question. It is uh, the, the effect of cesium is definitely there, still. But uh, fortunately, after four years, or five, five close now to five years, um, the, uh, the radiation level has uh, become low. Um, so far, mostly due to the, the decay of cesium-134, which has a half-life of two years. Okay. That means that the cesium-134 contribution, which was, the, which was dominant in the first year, in a very early phase, of course, it was iodine and other short-lived uh, uh, nuclide, but in the first year or two, first two years or so, Cesium-134 contribution to the external dose was a dominant contribution. Um, and that has decayed, okay? So that's uh, our, um, 
well, decontamination, I mean, the cleaning the houses and so on, uh, must have contributed to some extent, but um, our, the, the largest contributor was the decay of cesium-134. The remaining contribution comes from cesium-137, which has a half-life of 30 years. So this, this, this will stay. Th this contribution adds the uh, additional contribution from cesium-137 will stay for many more years. But uh, fortunately, as, uh, as you see here, because the, the natural background from uh, potassium and thorium and uranium was low before, uh, in, in Fukushima, the, the, uh, when you add, the con even with the added contribution from, uh, from, the, from cesium, the total stays uh, similar to, uh, to other places. So we do not declare that Fukushima, the whole region of Fukushima is okay. Of, of course, we didn't, as uh, Haruka already, already explained, uh, uh, our paper doesn't, doesn't say anything about the region within the 20 kilometer zone or in, uh, in Itate village, where people are still not allowed to live. But in other parts of Fukushima, uh, I would say that uh, the, the, uh, the daily, if you are uh, conducting, no, if you are uh, conducting you know, normal life, like the high school students who come to, who come to school and then uh, do some uh, extracurricular activities, outdoor and so on, then, then it is um, like, like in other places, the Fukushima is not particularly unsafe. That's, what, that's our message. Can we take the last question? Since, uh, uh, yeah. his, okay, so we have the last question. Yeah, okay. uh, thank you, Hiro Sasu again. Um, I very much uh, respect your scientific and objective approach uh, to this object. But uh, uh, there are some uh, people very clearly anti-nuclear mm -hmm. and uh, very much strongly uh, appealing for the uh, stop any nuclear mm -hmm. this. Uh, ha and they are quite vocal and active. Mm -hmm. are, they, are you receiving any personal threat or uh, uncomfortable sort of exercises by this group? Or are you free from that kind of thing? Um, I, that's a rather personal question. I, I re, I'd like to refrain from uh, uh, answering your question. Um, but uh, I, I, I know it. Yes. That's, that's it. All right. So thank you very much for coming to the conference. And uh, if you have any further questions, maybe you can approach it uh, privately to the Professor Hayano and uh, Odatina. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
The events at Fukushima reinforce that any nuclear accident with public health and safety or environmental consequences of that magnitude is inherently unacceptable. While we focused on the radiological consequences of this event, I believe we can, cannot ignore the large social and economic consequences such an event poses to any country with a nuclear facility that deals with such a crisis. In Japan, more than 90,000 people remain displaced from their homes and land, with some having little prospect for a return to their previous lifestyle in the foreseeable future. While not easy to characterize, these are significant hardships on these people and they are inherently unacceptable. So as we look to the future, and we look in a proactive way, we ultimately will have to address the issue of how we deal with, with nuclear events that lead to significant land contamination and displacement, perhaps permanently, of people from their homes and their livelihoods and their communities. What you just heard was the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's chairman Gregory Yasko saying that the NRC doesn't take into account mass evacuations and people not getting back on their land for centuries when it does a cost-benefit analysis as to whether or not a nuclear plant should be licensed. I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds and today I'm at the Regulatory Information Conference put on by the NRC in Washington, D.C. So today, I'm in Washington, D.C. A couple weeks ago, though, I was in Tokyo. And when I was in Tokyo, I took some samples. Now, I didn't look for the highest radiation spot. I just went around with five plastic bags. And when I found an area, I just scooped up some dirt and put it in the bag. One of those samples was from a crack in the sidewalk. Another one of those samples was from a children's playground that had been previously decontaminated. Another sample had come from some moss on the side of the road. Another sample came from a, um, um, the, the roof of an office building that I was at. And the last sample was right across the street from the main judicial center in downtown Tokyo. Well, I brought those samples back, declared them through customs, and sent them to the lab. And the lab determined that all of them would be qualified as radioactive waste here in the United States and would have to be shipped to Texas to be disposed of. Now think about the ramifications for the nation's capital, whether it's Tokyo or the United States. How would you like it if you went to pick your flowers and were kneeling in radioactive waste? That's what's happening in Tokyo now. And I think that's the point that Chairman Yasko was trying to make. When the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does its cost-benefit analyses now, it doesn't take into account the cost to society if you have to evacuate for generations or if you have to move 100,000 people, perhaps forever. There's 100 miles between us and about a dozen nuclear power plants here in Washington, D.C. Fukushima was almost 200 miles away from Tokyo. And yet Tokyo soil, in some places, the ones I just happened to find, would qualify as radioactive waste here in the States. How would we feel if our nation's capital were contaminated to that degree? So I agree with Chairman Yasko. New nukes and old nukes that are being relicensed should include as a cost in their analysis what we've learned to be happening in Tokyo and in Japan. Thank you very much, and I'll keep you informed.